Hi everyone. The artwork I'm going to do today is the Little White House in Glencoe, Scotland. And I'm using two photos previously taken uh, on a trip to Scotland. And I'm going to actually use part of both the photos to make a landscape artwork working on smooth paper. I'm using Windsor Yellow, Raw Sienna, Windsor Violet, French Ultramarine, and burnt sienna or Windsor and Newton colors. The Daniel Smith colors are hermatite violet genuine, serpentine genuine and suglutite genuine. And I've practiced a little house here on a piece of paper because to be honest being so tiny it's not that easy to draw. So I did practice here to um, to draw it up so that it's turned a little bit um, side on it's not completely straight so I've just sort of started to draw it up here before I went to my paper so it's taken me quite a bit to actually draw it up and so in doing so I've basically then put it on the paper because I've rubbed it out so many times and I haven't got the roof right yet but when I rub it out later hopefully the shape will be just exactly as I want it Otherwise, I'll be rubbing out forever. I'm going to use the major part of the artwork here for the mountain behind the house. And so I'll just sort of give myself an idea of what's here, but I don't want too much information. That comes up through there into a valley that comes down in through there. I sort of want to show that up later. Uh, coming in here, there's fog all over the top of the mountains here, but that's all right. This can come up higher and then I lose that photograph and come to this one. So I'm going to use that as the downward mark there and then come back up into the top of it here to get the sweep of that coming down into that valley. So who's going to be over the top? Um, the green one, this one here is going to be in front. So that'll pass that. And so that's just give me an idea of where I'm heading. Uh, to get the idea of the artwork and that's all I'm going to do it's very hard to see um, up there so if I come in a little bit closer you'll probably see a little bit of the drawing but I haven't done much at all I want it to look like as if there's a huge mountain behind because that's what it looks like is all you see is this little little tiny house sitting there there is a bit of a river runs across in front of it so I'm on smooth paper Archer's 300 GSM smooth and basically that's the start of the artwork and so I'll be able to actually just um, come in with the sky to start with so I'll end up with a I've got a harsh brush which is something that I don't often use on um, smooth paper but I'm going to today I can see a mark on the paper there that I don't want in the sky just in case the sky becomes very very light so I'm just going to wet it at random and try not to leave a line it's a bit green um, try not to leave a line where I'm at the bottom of the mountains because the mountains can come back darker over the top but if I go too dark with the sky that's not going to happen so I need a stormy looking sky and I'm working on a a plate actually I love working on a plate when I'm doing a, a single artwork um, because the fact that I can get in there with the paint and move it around and get colors that I want so traditionally grays that I've got are burnt sienna and French ultramarine and so I'll just keep going and bring it over here and I've got a bit of a gray so that'll do nicely for some of the sky so I'll start to bring that in, come back, pick up some more. Don't worry too much about the edges because on smooth paper, the edges will stay, but I want it to be a very volatile sort of sky because it really is an incredible place and the sky as well. I'm just going to fill in at the corner. I don't usually leave much at the edge of an artwork can have some lights coming through when it comes onto the mountain there I'll just use water to make it come past I've not got much white left but that's all right 
and I'll just keep adding the greys. Now I've got the major part of it. I'll then start to get something else happening. A little bit there, not much. I want that to stay light. So I'll keep going back into these dark areas. I'll leave a bit of light up there. Now that the paper's wet, you can accept a lot of paint that'll actually just go together. When it's first painted smooth paper, it, um, it really sucks up a lot of the water, but when you keep painting on it, it, um, it then paints better after it's been wet for a while. Colours are changing as I keep changing with the colours and of course now, now I'm down to where that um, mountain is so I better leave that edge and that's just by drying the brush and just leaving it across it and just keep working into those colours. I can work for quite some time here because every time I touch it, it does a different pattern for it which is really fabulous to get the sky to happen like that just the two colors changes from blue and it changes into brown every now and again that's the bluer side if i put more burnt sienna in it it gets a little bit brown and you'll see that brown in there along the edge of clouds heaviness at the bottom of a cloud now i'm starting to paint too much stop it just drop the colours in. It's granulating all on its own. I'm not even using the granulating colours yet. It's doing that because I'm working on smooth paper and keep rubbing the brush. And every time I rub the brush, it makes it more and more granulated. Probably just get some more dark up in the middle here and that'll about do it very threatening sky just let that do its own thing up there you could actually drop it down and let it come to the bottom of an area that'll make it stronger as well just by turning it and moving I'm going to leave that light I don't want it all to go it's very easy to lose it all down to the mountains. The green mountain will be last because it's coming down through here. It's got a lot of light through there. I possibly could get just a little bit more water through here just to stop that having nothing in behind there. In the distance you'll see that. Don't make them parallel. So I just changed it slightly. You can go up to that one. And so you've just got a bit of light in the distance. Down to the mountains. Okay, I'll start on the dark mountains and start bringing those in. And I'm going to start using the colour, uh, Sug Suglatite Genuine. I have trouble saying the name, so just bear with me. I'll leave it there so you can see it. Okay, that's a purpley shade. And I've also got some of the other colours to put into it. Um, you can mix and match all your colors so i'm going to start out with this and bring that in on the mountain and just and it's a real um it's got a like a shine to it as well if you can see it on its own on a piece of paper you'll see it's got a silvery look to it uh, what did my mountains do they come down here just getting colour on that to start with up the top where it's going to be darker later. I've got uh, Windsor Purple I can put in it as well and get up there and get it really purple. It'll go up into the sky. That's okay because that's where it was coming off in the, the clouds. That'll come down in behind there. Okay, now I need other colours in there. I need some lighter colours, maybe picking up a bit of raw sienna. And those two together with raw sienna is quite nice. So I'll start to get lighter colours into it down here. And I'm just getting it wet. It's 
gone up into the <laughs> looks like a uh, volcano so I'll just bring that back with a rough brush and just bring that back into here and muck up the edge the edge of the the mountain I can get that back stronger later the colors are all mixing that's good comes down into here and it'll start to come down that way so I'll just get the idea of where it's going into that other mount get these very light and I'm just getting the paper wet coming back to this area here it comes down into that a little bit darker comes back into the raw sienna down the bottom here gets a bit green down through there and now I'll play in this area now I've got these edges so that I can come back to them it's just not good if you leave edges and then you can't come back okay so now I'm going up to the top of the mountain and getting some darks so one of my darks is of course ultramarine and burnt sienna that makes a black if I get enough of that and a little bit of winds of purple to go with this color and I'm going to pick up that blacky sort of color what do we got now a bluey sort of color I want it to be more black so I'll put some more brown in it and this will be the top of that mountain so it's mountainous it's not straight edges let the brush do some work for me let it go out lightly and now I can work into this dark so in behind there I'll make that a little bit darker what else have I got here I've got this other dark which is the hermatite violet now that changes color as well so I'll pick up some of that that's it there and it's a brownie sort of a color but it'll go in with all these other colors and make a great color in through there it's mountains make it into something that's not just straight painting let the paint do the work for you so it has a darker section in here so I'm going to pick up some really strong winds of purple with the darks just get that in behind here it has bits and pieces in it as well in different colors so I'm just going to put that into that crevice pick up some burnt sienna and put in with it just to let it do its own thing there for a bit come back here and get that edge oh that's nice that's turned into the brown sort of showed up into the rest of it so you can take color off you can put color on let that go past there so that's really got a really strong dark next to the light which is nice keep it all wet don't stop just keep it wet and keep working into it go back to my purple water it's going to go out into the sky of course just go to that area through there and let that go the angles that this is going it looks messy at the moment but hopefully it'll come together uh, because when I get a lot of this on I'll then turn back to the greens and start to work in those that goes back into this V that section there so I'll bring that in get rid of edges by washing the brush and taking that back that's not allowed to do that just yet I like the raw sienna in the background here and that'll allow me to be able to come back in with different bits and clear out sections now I can clear out sections you can even put raw sienna on the brush to clear it out so you can get different colors in it I like what's going on there um, I've got to get it to come down into this crevice 
down into here. Now the crevice is going to be caused by water going on the tip of the brush and coming down through here and winding its way down the page. Could have taken a bigger turn there. So I'll drop more water into it. I'll tip it before I do it. Let's see if it'll follow where it was spoken up. Didn't. Oh, it split and went down there, which is good. Whatever you want to do. Do it again. Now, that'll leave a mark on the paper. And it's done its own thing. It's come down there. So now I'll dry the brush and come down there with it. Get a little bit of a turn in it there. So that's marked the paper. But in marking the paper, it's done something for me. This can come down sideways. Um, there's lots of rocks and bits and pieces up in here. So if I just dance the brush around and just get some other colours into that. It looks like the mountain took off out there as well, but that's all right at this stage. Some burnt sienna. Some burnt sienna into some of these crevices and the purple and burnt sienna together will make a pattern on that mountain. A little bit rich in colour at this stage, but that's all right. I can then blend it and get the colour to go back into the other colour so it's not as rich in a warm colour up there in the mountains. If I need to get that back, I can wait now or I can get it back. The thing is, if you try and get it back now, you're going to wet the paper. And of course, water follows water. So you're better off to wait and let it dry. Come back down there. That one there, come back into there. Brush marks. Where are you going? So in fact, now I'm taking some paint off. And all that leaves different patterns than that on the actual area. This rock here, this looks too severe to me. So I'm just going to get some dirty paint and take it out where it is going. I'm going to take it out there because it looks a really odd shape. Maybe that's a better shape. Just in the look of what's actually happening. Uh, what's happening here? Quite like that. What's my river doing down here? Not much. Okay, so to get that to actually show out, I'll then come back with the colours that I've got going on there and come up to it and make it go up to it and around and out and take that up the mountain. If it's all doing the same pattern, I need to stop, which it was to start with. Still talking to this area here. That comes down through there. Got some scrapey bits. That's the only bit I don't like at the moment. It's um, messy, so it needs paint. So it could be the granulating paint that's caused that, but... I just don't like the colour either. It's too purple. Even though the mountain looks purple. In real life it looked rather purple. The photograph here is not really what the colour was that we were seeing when we was actually there. It was a much brighter purple. And just to show you what I started out with, I started out with that photo group. And of course it was confusing and that's how purple it looks there which is much stronger in colour. That's more the colour that it actually is than this one. But in that there was too many options to actually do this. So that's why I've actually put that aside. And the other one is the fairy ponds but I'll do that later. Um, I'll just work on this one at the moment. Um, and remember we're coming down to the little house. So I need to go back to this colour, which is a blue. I think it was just the darker blue. So I'm going to join in with that, make that stronger. And that'll bring some darks into there as well. And so in the water that's come down here, it's caused some sort of a happening in it there. 
So that's more important than just having straight painting. So with the darks I've got there now, I'll just put some of it in there and let that do its own thing. That'll come down the mountain. So maybe straighten out the mountain a bit. It's very severe looking at the moment because it's just the peak. Do I need to take out some of that? I could get it to come down a little bit more down the mountain. Oops, purple blue line. Leave it. What's happening here? I did one side of the actual um, waterway coming down through there, but I can just work a little bit stronger on that by getting a little bit more of a turn in it there. Coming back down here, a turn in it there and then coming down. And remember, I haven't really done anything else much here. The green up here will be later when I'm coming down for the foreground. Um, the next part is this here that has all those colours in it as well. I'll let that cauliflower as much as it wants to. I'll just take it up to there. So I'm watching what it's doing while it's drying as well. You can also go back to any of the colours that you've got there. It was just a spot. Uh, what happens here? There's no light there. I can just get some light into that. Come off too quickly. Uh, so all I'm looking for is light and dark. And I think I've just about achieved that there. It's doing its own thing. On the other side of it, this was the other side that I was supposed to get. Just to let you know where that is, is just to come down through around there and out. And now you can see that that's happening but I've got a trail each side of it that I don't need, which is that one. I don't need to see that and I'll do it again and go up the mountain. That shows steepness if I do the brush stroke that way and I need to get rid of this that's doing the same thing. It's haloing around that waterway meaning that you could see the back edge of the paint. I don't need to see both sides of it. I can bring it back. Okay, so I'll go on to the next part of it down through here and into more of the Glen. Um, and that actually goes into light through here. So I'll leave that. I'll just leave that as light through there. Let that out and start to work into the Glen. The Glen has a pinker sort of a look to it, a little bit more of a, a purple and a brown together, more of that sort of color underneath. Uh, and up through here, it has a bit of purple at the top, but that's warmer. So I'm just gonna put that color down first before I start getting into the other colors. It also has this coming up to just a shape. It's not as severe as that in the actual artwork, but anyway. It's coming down through here. Put the purple on top of that. Just to get the colour in through there of the top section. Let it do its own thing. Remember what I was saying about edges? Get rid of that edge. I don't want that edge just now. Working my way down through here and it has... Um, little bits of green coming in through and even up in here it has green coming down in through there so i've just got that uh, serpentine genuine and just bring that down and up over the mountain there and that'll cause that to have a green sort of look through it there's some of that coming down through maybe here and it's winding its way down around the mountain because of the water washes coming down there and that'll actually just get the green into that one. Uh, the colours on here have changed dramatically. Now I'm coming up through here into these sections. There's some light there on the top of that, but there's also some green coming down with it as well. So I'll get some green to come down from here, jump onto that, break it up, and then come down through here. Same with it here. Just break that line so it's not just a straight line all the way down the page and get some green to come down through here. Don't want to get too green to start with, so I'll lighten that off. And 
coming down here we get into a light green down here so I'm putting a base down for colors but I'll come down and re-wet it when I want to come back to it and so now it's just the light green almost all water and just get something on the page that'll allow me to get round my little house up to the house take care of the edges no hard lines left when I go out from where I am get rid of that okay around the back of the house it's into the pinker color into the pinky sort of brown some of the purple with the burnt sienna in it and I've got that now that can go in the back here it's a really good color just get some lines coming down where the water's coming down out of that area up through there get into the the water I'll pick up the color strong now because I've got to get around this house somehow okay the chimney the roof the edge now I don't need it to be very strong I've got the trees to go in there later so I'll take that away let it run I will turn it just to get the house I need to get the house chimney let it run away from me so that I um, got dirty fingers so that I don't have to worry about the rest of it down to the little shed this is all running which is doing its own thing it's either going to be a masterpiece or a mess no two ways about it um, down around the little shed if I let it run it won't hurt because it's only going to go where it's wet it's a little bit green at the back there but I'm just going to put some dark underneath it so that I can really find the house and that's the important part of it come back up and have a look at what I've actually done with the brush just the point of the brush I spun it round again Go right up to the roofs okay that is one of the granulating colors and you can see it's doing a fine job of that okay so put that down off we go back to green it's quite green through here now I can get it wet and get that to go right up to the house green okay what's happening over here something here is not very nice just get direction it's not too bad that'll start going into this other green section here the one that's got the um, it's got a section of light through there I'm going to get that with the color I've got now which is just comes from about here just winds its way around backwards and forwards some of it disappears it'll come back again oh, it's going to go over the house if I keep that up well, I better go that way I've just put that on the paper so I know where it is okay so I'm coming back down here now I better get up into the mountain here a couple of things here that I'm not happy with and that's this line here maybe I should just take it down the mountain mm -hmm. once it starts scraping it gets ugly so I'm just going to move it with some water get it wet again and I can still come back because I can still lift it it's done something interesting anyway all right I'm going to get up into this other one so there's rocks and stuff at the top of this and they're in a gray sort of a color so I get plenty of paint 
and onto the dry paper. This is rocks. And so there's touches of green, touches of not much brown, or just dark. Put some purple in it just to make it match the other side. I didn't like that colour. Because the paper's dry there where the sky is, that'll show really well over that. Touches of pockets of green. And then it's going into the green and then into the lighter colours. A lot of water. Let's go past that. That'll rub out of the way. This is the granulating paint as well. So now I'll go into the pinker granulating paint. Now I've dropped water somewhere. I heard it. It's that bit I don't want. There it probably won't hurt. Into the pinker colours. Let it run. Get it down to the waterway. Mm, fun. The wetter those colours are, the better they are. The more that they play, uh, that can come into where I had that light river. the river around here somewhere that's where it sort of starts so that can go into there um, the river come around maybe too severe but I can put something over that later Still coming around. Out. The important thing is I want to get down here at this stage. I want to play in there. So that's where I'm heading. I can have some green now. Start to get some green to match up with this green. A lot of water. So that's where that water's ended up. Come down there and it's turned green. Watch out, I don't get into the house. Put some of the other colour with it. Don't let it by itself. Okay, just be careful of the edge of the page. So I probably could do with some other colours in through there to match up the other colours. So I'm going to come in with the purples and just get some other colours in through here just to actually make you look around the artwork otherwise there's nothing to look at make sure you come right off the page make it move there's a watermark coming down there that could do something good i'll let it come down you can't see that there there's the watermark coming down and I'll let it come down through there. I'll add something to it actually, give it some hurry up. Okay, hang on, I'll move it over so you can see it. I'll bring it back. When it gets to there, I'll bring it back again. here at the moment. Now I'll bring it round the corner. It's hard to follow I know. Give it some more hurry up. I 
and bring it round again. So now it's got a big watermark all the way down the page. It's caused all that to happen, which is excellent. It looks like it's really coming together there. Now, the main thing I wanted to... Oh, we got this happening too. That decided to come down to greet us. Um, I'll just move it out, but it needs more paint. It's actually cleared itself off. And it doesn't look interesting anymore. So I'm just going to make it into a crevice. And that will make a darker section in that coming down here to the house. Okay, into the foreground. So the foreground now I'm going to wet. And I'll do it with raw sienna. That will give me a light colour underneath. Maybe put some um, French ultramarine in it. That will make grey. Got your green, got your grey, that can go up to there. Try and leave interesting brush marks. Okay, so I'm going to go into what colour? I'll go into this pinky colour. I'll just run out of that, so I'll go somewhere else now. I'll go to some burnt sienna, water. Put it in and I'm going to lead into the artwork with this. And so that's just brown leading in there. I haven't done anything for the river through there. That could be just in the, the grey coming through. And I'll put the brown also along here. I wanted that to lead that, that to lead towards the house. I'll leave that. And I'm going to put some rock salt, some ordinary salt on here. Just a little bit of ordinary salt. And then some of the larger pink salt. Right where you'd see it's about there. So it's got a little bit of fine salt. It's hard to pick up. Now it's got bigger salt. And I'm going to pick up some colours and put in round them. I'll put the French ultramarine to start with. That'll give it a greyer sort of effect. Shouldn't just spot it. Leading up through there. Um, then I'll come back with some burnt sienna. I didn't mean to put it on the blue. That wasn't fair. Just did a, I've got more scrape on the tape than I have on the paper, but Anyway, that's all right. All right, I'll let that dry and then come back. Um, there is something I was going to do is get some of this green quite strong just about here. And probably over the other side. Some green. And I'll just let that sit for a tick. And I'm going to put water behind it. Let's see what that'll do. Okay. Oh, this has decided to do its own thing or without me. wet the top of it and put water behind it. Let's 
see what sort of pattern that can give me. Work behind it. It's got a huge tree there. I don't know whether I want that, but anyway, I can get it back later. You can always get it back. And it's going to be got back now. Oh, it's going to leave a spot. It's a nice granulation through here where it's been really wet. All right, so it's time to dry it. Now this is a day later and as you see here I have some matte spray, Mugador matte spray and if I've used salt on an artwork when it's dry later I'll spray the front of the whole artwork and the back so that the salt doesn't react again when it becomes damp weather which can happen quite a lot and if you've used a lot of salt then it will make your paper very wet again. I've looked at this artwork for a day now, so when you see it on a video, it doesn't mean that you just paint it and just paint it out and that's it. I've actually sat down and thought about what needs to change, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and what I need to do to improve the artwork and finish the artwork off. And so basically, if I go back up to the mountains, which I can do, then I'll paint my way down again. Then I'd leave the mountains and come back to the mid-ground, to the foreground. And then finally the foreground or wherever the focal point is, which is the little house. That's the last place that I'll actually paint. So I've removed the salt with the palette knife just by scraping across the paper. It's smooth paper, but it won't hurt it to actually go across it with the palette knife. The other thing is that I've got several spots that are lined up here. I'll deal with those later. I like the rest of it. I don't think they look attractive, so they can change later. All right, so I'm going up to the top of the artwork and usually coming through this mountain itself. It is a natural, um, Glencoe is a natural place with a little house. This is quite square uh, in the top of that mountain. I very rarely go out of an artwork artwork down so I'm going to just put the darks in behind that to raise that up and that will be in the blues in the uh, silvery sort of colors so I've got the um, cyclotite um, and then I'll go into the hermitite that'll make it a darker value and then I'll change it by putting some purple in it and if you test your colours on a sheet of paper and see what you've got uh, before you start, I really very rarely do that. I just let loose and hope for the best. And I always do uh, quite like what I do. Very rarely do I do something and then go, oh, gee, I really hate that. So that looks like there's more of a mountain down there. And I'll take that down just to get away from there. And so now you've got the higher mountain at the top. I'll use those same colours again, cyclotite, and I don't say the names properly, but bear with me, hermitite, um, and then Windsor purple. And so I'm going to add to this mountain up here because there's more to this. So I'm going to slide it out, let it go down through there, get the edge really neat. That's the point of the brush, which I don't really use a lot. Get that to come out down through there and down into the artwork there. Now I'll wet that so that it does some running around like it did previously. And so that then will have a new edge to that. Pick up a bit of blue in that as well, a bit of French ultramarine. And so that goes across the top, down through there and back around. So now it makes it look squarer across the top of the mountain. 
don't like the edges here, so I'll have a look at them out. And they come down, some of them are quite straight because it's a high country area and it doesn't have a lot of um, change in the, the shape of it. That'll come down in behind the green. Now, if that doesn't go in behind the green, I'll make it go in behind later. Just take a bit of light out. And so now you can't see what's going on. It's just happened itself. So looking at the artwork, I've actually come back with a pencil here and come around the edge of the grass there, or it looks like the, um, the glen coming down. And I'll just put some colour in behind here and leave this as the waterway coming down through. The same with this waterway. I can actually get some other colours in behind here to make it look more attractive with the change of colour. Now I've got the lights and some of the colour on there. I can change that and come into there as well. So I can come into places um, like here behind there and just put the brush down. Let it do its own thing. Again, those colours, the uh, subcotyped, um, the hermitite violet and the purple, Windsor purple. Put a little bit of ultramarine in it as well. So I've got all colours. And so that can start to come in through here and start to get things to happen. So if I come down through here, now I'm doing more painting. That will actually get me an area down through there and then if I come in through here I can actually come down and change over and get rid of some of that green and just come down into there that'll leave that as a lighter area if I take off what I call the back edges the back edges of these edges down here that'll come down into there probably with something at the bottom of it there just something like a rock or something in there just to see leave that light get rid of the back edge of the paint here i don't want to take out too much of that original painting because that's the thing that makes it look more interesting rather than changing absolutely everything now this will come over just come over slightly just so you don't see all the edges and it makes it look like it comes down that area through there. So now we're looking at um, coming in round through here with different bits and pieces. There's, um, there is some greenery in some places. So I've just got the green again and I'll put some French ultramarine in it and that'll just make it a darker green and it'll just do something along those edges as if there's something down there. Down through here, it's all rocks. There's all rocks and bits and pieces down through here. So I could make that more interesting by bringing in more rocks. Same colours in the purple as well as the blues, all those colours. And they can come in through this section here. So I'll just let the brush dance in down through there. I'll put some brown in it as well. They are rocks. A little bit of brown in it as well. That'll just make it go dark. And take out some of that area down to where the water is. So now you see some sort of pattern coming in through there. Some of those edges can change. That'll make it the area that I did and not just the paint. What that's doing is changing those areas. You can even change it by putting water into it. To let it run that'll change it as well so it'll start to set where it wants to go not where i want it to go so now we're getting a little bit more information a little bit more light and dark some of the darks over here could start to come into play as well so winds of purple ultramarine and i'm going to put some burnt sienna in that and this will make it darker it will make a really strong dark so that can just go in there and do something to change that area there. Just look like a rock fall where there's something going on. And I'm going to leave that wet so that when it dries, I can see what's happening. I can't see what's happening. Maybe that green section there is a little bit strong, but I'll leave it at this stage. I can always come back and change it. 
and push paint out. People don't understand how well paint lifts. And so that will lift and take out a light in there. And then I could put some green back. And what that will do is just change it. It will still be green, but it won't have the straight line down the mountain that it had. It will just have something else happen to it. So your eye can't see it now as that straight line. Don't mind the scratchy bits there. So I'll move on down through here. The edge down the river would sort of show up as well where that waterway is. I'll use some raw sienna, some burnt sienna. And that will just get a lighter colour in some of the edges down just through the edge here. Just in that light edge down through that edge of it. That'll just get that edge, get that edge. So sometimes it gets thinner, sometimes thicker. And so if I do too much though, it'll be too strong. So I'm just going to leave it there. Probably just take some of this out. Some of that, it's getting too much paint. So don't be afraid to look at what you've done and then change it. Okay, so coming down through here, I'm moving over now to this area through here, and there's bits and pieces of rocks. So if I wanted to find some rocks in there, I'll do it a different way. I try, try and paint differently the whole time, just get some lighter value, and I'll come down through here and leave sections of colour down in behind where it's darker. That'll leave a rock a large rock there um, that can come up through here that can come into a rock there so I'm not painting around the rocks well I am really but I'm painting between the rocks at the same time so then rocks are starting to form in that paint and so also I can drop the darks in as well uh, bring that up That'll give me an edge to that. So again, I'm working in what I've actually got there. There's a marking through here. That's nice and light. Don't forget to leave some lights as well. It doesn't have to be all dark to show something up. That then comes down through here. But that's made that too obvious. So I'll just get back there and put it back in the paint that was already there. That still continues on. Okay, so now I've done that, I'll get something to come up that rock. Something a bit drier, a bit dirty on the brush, dry the brush on a tissue and get something to come up that rock. And so now you've got something that you can look at up through there, coming up to the top there. I'll leave a lot of that through here. And do I like that? Not too much. Just change the shape of it slightly. Um, this is looking like it's just surrounded something, so I'll have to stop that. And what I'll do is drop some darks in behind it, in here, and just make it darker in a couple of places. I'll come back to that. This is too straight. That could go up through the rock. Okay. Okay, moving on, coming over to this side. I left just the place around here to put some colour, and I'll do it in a raw sienna sort of a colour, a bit of a lighter colour, coming down to sandy colours. Just get something around that edge. Okay, now what the brush did is more interesting than what I did with the pencil. So I'll leave that and then rub this out later. Could come out a little bit further that way. Um, down through here there's going to be a part of a road so I'll go back to raw sienna so it's lighter that'll come down through here somewhere so I'll just start with the brush let it go down down and down that'll just go into nowhere so will this other bit that'll go into nowhere so that just shows that there's something else in there but I'll come around that later. So I've got a big white area here. Um, what to do with that? I'm just painting in dirty paint now. If I come in underneath that, 
that'll just give me something there in that area to show the edge to that. Push it back. Still got this area through here, but a lot of this is in like a, a um, browns and gorse in just countryside. And so I'm just going to come back here for a tick and see what I can do with this. Drop some water in, make it do something other than just what actually I painted. What you don't paint is more important than what you do paint. It's getting a lot of sharp edges, but I can look at that later. I'm happier with the shape of that. That's more to the shape. There's something I've got to get off down here to start with. Is this line through here? That's just not working because it's coming to a dead stop with the green. And that line there needs to go as well. So it can go sideways down around the mountain, but it needs that to go. Bit of a straight line there, didn't mind it, but now it's actually flattened out because otherwise the house will fall off there. This is too bright, bit of water. Okay, coming down through here, now this is an area there I was going to make a colour with, um, what was it? It was the Hermitite Violet and Burnt Sienna together. So that's Hermitite Violet and Burnt Sienna. Those together. So that's warming up. Now a lot of water on the brush. And just let it scrape on through here. To give me something else through there. Now I've got just about nothing on the brush. So that I can play with that. Let that come in. I don't want to show it too strongly here because it looks like the clouds have sort of got light on there. So that's now brought the colours into that. It'll run down here slightly and that's alright. Don't mind if it does that. It's that shape that I'm looking for. Okay, down through here again, it can still have that shape. How do I get across the river? I'm going to cross the river. Get that out. That's with the tissue if I want to remove it. Paint is very easily to be removed in watercolour. That has to stop because the river goes through. Okay, so I'll come down the other side now. Get that out. Dry out the river. Okay, comes down the other side now. Um, Hermitite and burnt sienna. That can come down into here. You notice I only put a little bit of paint on and then go to water because I want to see the colour that goes into that. It can go into the road. If it takes over the road, then it does. Just goes down here and goes into that colour that's behind the house. Don't want to take that bluey grey away from there either. But it's getting a little bit more form in it now. Um, in behind here you can have a little bit of paint. But also I'm going to go to a wigger to do that. A liner brush. Um, to actually get some of that same browny sort of colour along the edge here. Just go along the edge, stop, start, a little bit more. And it's only on that side of it. So you'll just start to see that coming in through there. Probably not necessary much there, but I'll just put a little bit. So now when I come back with the brush dry, I won't touch the rest of the waterway, just that. And so I'll take off the ends. So now you'll just see the edge of that coming through and you won't look at the paint, you'll look at the actual edge of it showing up. That'll come down further, don't know whether it's dry down here but we'll find out. Comes back down through here. Oh, too much of a tic tac. But that'll go, when I put my brush there, it'll take it out. That actually mucked it up too much, I'll come back 
and just in a couple of places go higher on the bank and that'll keep it there. It stays if it's on dry paper, if it's on wet paper it'll keep moving. Comes down through here, looks like it almost pools down there, which is, I'll just let that go actually. What I'm looking for is the edge to it, down here, the edge to it there, where I was just painting, that's gone over the edge, take that back, take that back. I just wanted the colour there, don't really need to know what it is, just the colour. Just so it's got something in through there to look at. Okay, this I didn't like. Where that goes, it's got to go round. Okay, back over here to the greenery. I'm going to come back to the green in front of the house and make that quite green. some of that. You can just go over. Now I want it light over this edge because it looks like it goes down um, just by the painting. Get that to go straight. don't care if it stops that way but I don't want it to actually um, look like it's actually got ends on it. There's an end there but that's okay. That'll come in round through here. Up behind and the color behind it is the reddish color again which is the burnt sienna and hermitite and so I'm going to turn my wrist around there see if I can come around behind the house and normally would turn it upside down by now but I'm going to try and build without turning it the trees have got to go over that it can go into that ground and so that'll hopefully run. I'll put it over back here. Turn around it. can disappear then. All I want is some of that colour in behind here. To make it disappear, I lay the brush down and wet the paper. and get it to go out. So to get that to disappear, I'll wet out here and then push that out to it and it'll take it away without keep painting the colour because I like this bluey colour that's in behind but now the house is starting to stand out. Flatten that out a bit. don't want that to look like it's not on a flat surface. Those colours would go really nicely there. So looking now at other parts of the artwork, um, it's got a lot going on over here, but not much over here. Those ready browns, I want to bring those in off the paper. I don't want those white marks over here. Don't mind that one because it's not actually white, but I don't like those so much. So burnt sienna, it's getting warmer as I come down here. Bit of the grey. Hermitite and burnt sienna. They can come in. So if I get them to do something interesting as they come in, get rid of that white paper. Water. Okay. Want it to come back? Push it back. But don't play too long or you start to lose your undercolour. Now it's got something of the warmer colours coming in. Let that dry for a little bit, then I'll come back to it. Take it off the paper, it looks terrible. Okay, so now we're introducing this colour into the artwork as well. And so that colour again can come over to here. I'm just waiting for that to dry and I'll come back to it. Um, if I put the brush down, the strongest part of the paint is on the brush now. So I'm going to come this way. I'm going to come back that way. Just let the brush zigzag up through there. Let it go up 
of the hill there and just get that in so that here is the darkest part of the brush where that's going and again that's that ready brown stone come in it can even be a little bit redder than that where it is so if I drop the paint in now it only goes to where I wet it so that allows it to actually have the strength down through here goes up the mountain Roddy Polly's there on the paper that won't hurt okay the other side of it it's light up here so I'll just pick up more water drop it into there where it was wet and water back here to stop it do I see those edges so remember what I said about this being too many bits and pieces that then will change by the fact that I can come back here with water and a softer brush actually a softer brush which would be a mop brush in a sable in a smaller one not a big one and just run back over some of that and what that's going to do is just put it all together this pit here just run back over that wet it to the length of time that I know that it's just going to move some of it down through here some of it's still wet as well it'll only calm it down won't ruin it unless I play on it forever and I'm not going to so now that's a lot quieter than what it was it's still quite strong up there but I do need some strength at the top I'll look at this later that's a bit of a worry for me at the moment that's a bit strong as well so I can just take that back if I don't want it uh, all right I'll do it now just put my brush up through it and change it and so it doesn't matter what it does it just takes it out of the vision and that's the idea of it something here but I'll let that go again and when I finish today I'll actually put it aside for any length of time and then come back to it as well so the other thing I want to do is work my way down through here um, I have put some brown in through there that can sort of just stay there that color is a little bit odd in color but if I repeat that color around through here that could be good as well that had um, burnt sienna in it and the other colors so it's now a burnt sienna sort of colour. So I'm going to bring it down in through here again, down to where that road was. Just let it brush do some work for me. I shouldn't have to do all the work. The brush should do it. Can you stop? I can see it looks like it's coming down here and that could be the rest of the river if I can get that to happen so it's the green plus the hermitite and I'm just going to come in behind that there just to get that dark come down through here and get that darker down this side Let it come up on the side of that in places so it's not completely straight with nothing going on it looks a bit like a hill now that can come around in there but change that look of it so it's just softer coming down through there that just comes out of the picture we're we going to steep probably not now this is a waterway coming through here there's a bit of a creaky bits and pieces coming through again like the waterways that's coming down the mountain um, don't know whether that's too strong yet but the whole thing now is, is sort of working on the fact of these waterways coming down so I'll have to be careful I don't lose my little house the house is the most important thing the other thing I want to do is separate this section here there's a bit of a hill but there's no difference between it there will be if I come down behind here just let that go into there and then get that green out of it and come around the top of that
that'll disappear up through there. So that actually got this to stand out a little bit stronger because that comes down to the house. That's a little bit strong. Don't like this so much. I'll probably just wash that out later as well. But I've got to look at it for quite some time for that. So if I wet some of this, don't like the colour. I'm going to come back with the browns in there. Just put some brown into it. Let the brush do its own thing again. And I'll darken out into the corner. I generally do that a lot. Darken out into this corner with the darks. And bring that in quite strong. What that's going to do is just alleviate the fact that you're going out to the light. And now you're going out to dark. You can leave some of that maybe. Can't leave this one. Get this colour to set down in there. Almost lost my heels. I'm going to get my heel back. And I'm going to make it less steep. and get back to that later. Okay, so here we actually did some grassy bits before and I think we can get more of that in there. So if I went above it, left it somewhere to go, put some colour at the bottom and I'll put a darker green that would just have more um, French ultramarine in the Green in the serpentine genuine. Put that down here. Let it go up into there. Now, nothing stays the same everywhere you put it. I just changed and picked up some brown. I'll pick up some blue. Put that in it. Uh, is it too straight? Probably. And then I'm going to just put some water behind it. Send it up that way. Take it out. And that will cause water problem but if you get up to the top here if you get up to that line then it will um, only go up there and do a square top you don't want that so I'll just let it play itself out there and bring it back down and so now you get some sort of a form of something along there I'll leave that and let it dry because that's the fun bit could have more of that over here. That could be interesting through here. So if I repeat something somewhere, I'll do it again in other places. And so I could basically do some up here and show the rise in that. There's a rise. Or over here. I don't like this area here, so it could be a good place to put it in there and just let that go um, so that you're not taking away from the house. We'll do that because I don't like it. Okay, so I'll wet it first. Even that'd be better. That's much better. Don't mind the brown that I bought in there, but I said I was going to do something with that and bring in some sort of rocks. I've got burnt sienna, very wet. I don't like to paint as wet as that. Generally, the paint's drier, but I paint wetter on the paper. Put some French ultramarine in it and make it into a dark, as well as come back put a brown. And just to see what I can get in through there, maybe a set of rocks or something. Something, just a rock ledge coming down into the artwork there.
just put the colour in. Then I come back with a dry brush, brush into it and see what happens. That's more interesting. Looks like there's rocks coming down from there. I actually come back to it. But it's introducing this colour. Again, looking around at what's there, I was going to bring that um, grassy look into it back up here. Wet the top of it. Put some colour below it. Some greens. Some brown. Different colours. Just let it run into there and see what happens. Repeats what I've got going on there. This being wet, it'll do all sorts of things all on its own. Going for bigger here. Come back to that and see what I've got. All right. There's not much going on here. Probably just that purpley colour. Just in here. Just in that side of that. Too much waterways because that's all I'll end up with. Waterways, nothing else. Burnt sienna, limitite. Back to here. Okay, I'll dry that and have another look at it. I'm going to try and get some colour in around the house to actually make the house stand out more. And that's in the ready brown, like the colour where gorse comes into it. But then I also think that the halo around the white cloud around that mountain is really not showing it off. So what I'm going to do is bring it up higher to get it to go over the mountain and over the clouds because that white line halos that whole top which doesn't look good. This one goes up and peaks to it but that can happen but where it does that it's really not looking so good. So I'll use the um, Hermitite Genuine um, some winter purple, some blue, see what colour I've got, I better check it, I don't often check but I better, nice colour, very very dark. Now I don't want to pick up water, I want it to be strong paint, 
So that will go up and get the top of that. Just get the top. And then see if I can get it to come in and not muck up what's already there. Can have a little bit of light there. Come down into that. And so now it's got a peak on it. It doesn't join up with the rest of the mountain there. A little bit of water. Not much. It'll go onto that. And so that'll leave something darker at the top. But it's a bit pointy. It's more of a flat sort of top. In my photograph, you can't see the top of it because of the uh, fog line. The, tr the um, clouds are over the top of it, so we couldn't see the top. Um, but that'll just give it a little bit of something. I still don't like it. I still don't like it because the rest of it, it doesn't match up with the rest of it. So I'll just play a bit longer. Make this one a little bit higher. Make it look square. That's a little bit better, but this one looks too high. So I'm going to take that out and bring that up. So the whole lot of it looks taller. Bring bits down through there, get it to join on. So it looks like part of it. The light's shining on it, I think. Yeah, the light's shining on it which doesn't make it look so hot, but that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to get some new pathways down here, down there, new pathway. I don't mind that. Mm. No, I think I like it the way it is. Oh, that can come out a bit further over to that one. That's given it a bit of light. I'll tip it so you can see what I did. It's just got a little bit of light in there so that then it's got it coming down the mountain. That one went up. Mm, if I keep going. I'll make it go out so it doesn't go right down the mountain. Alright, now I was talking about this section here. Um, I want to get something across here, something across there, possibly with the green that will go into this colour here. Move some edges, move some water edges, you go up into there, now come across, let it do its own thing there and That'll be damp when I come back. And so now it was the ready brown, which was burnt sienna and a bit of raw sienna, burnt sienna, a little bit of the hermitite, but more in the brown. And so now that'll come in through here, up around down through here, around to the back of the house. soft edge in it, let it out with water, bring it down, let it out with water, comes down behind the house, that goes down into that area there, I don't want to cover that dark, I like that dark there, so I'll just soften it, and so now the edges are softened, it's got to be going up side there. Um, I think I need to grey it down a bit. Put a bit of grey in it as well. A bit of the... Subtite. Genuine. Put some of that in it to grey it down a bit. Now that's going to come down and in behind the house so that it's got that colour coming in behind the house and I'll turn it sideways because I need to get round the house again. Right 
right up to the house where the chip wall and the back and into the water. Let it run. So it go out there for a tick. And just try and get this dark enough down here. The roof comes out at an angle. Then down. I'll let it out down the foreground here in a minute. Just letting it come back around through there. Done the same pattern there, but that's all right because that's going to go up. And so, and it's come down the mountain there and just come over here a bit. I'll just move that back over and make it look like it's got a rough edge in it going into that area. Now it's got a rough edge. This is where it goes into a little tissue where it goes up into the grass that you'll get that sort of an effect it can go up and through there that can have a um, stronger edge don't want all that you can go back up into here i'm going to leave it at that like it's got the ground, no, I need to take it out because there's nowhere here that there's a lot of trees around. It just doesn't happen up there. It's just about nothing going on. That'll come down to water down here, around the house slightly, just around that end of the house where the trees are going. Some of these edges can soften into the green. And so now I'll meet it with the green again. So there's layer after layer of colours here. That's going to bring me back down to this area, back up into there. Do I want that straight edge? Probably not. I don't want to tip it because it'll tip everything else up. Soften that edge. Let it come out softly. I just went up there, I'll leave that. Decide what you can leave with your brush and what you can't. If you want some edges, that's fine. Think of change. Everywhere you look, you want to see change. I'm going to bring some darker colours into that. Just along the edge of it. Then we'll just bring something else to it, something interesting. Let it run up. Because it's wet behind it, hopefully it'll go up there and do something interesting. Certainly made the, the colour go up there. So now it's got something there, they shouldn't be too, too high. So I'll turn it. What do I like and what don't I like? Take some lights back. Make it look like it's just along the edge. I don't want it too far up. So to do that, if this was dry here and I put it down here, it wouldn't go very far because it's dragging it back down. Because of the fact that the paper's dry here, it'll keep some of it down there. Run into that. Plain. Shouldn't play that much. Don't mind that. If what happens here, that can disappear. Don't want a hill. Do something that can stay as that. Alright, so now I've got the house standing out so you can actually see the house on the mountain, whereas before you couldn't see it. You've got the bits and pieces here that look like gorse. The green won't be as green as that. I guess I could put a little bit of raw sienna in there just to tame that down a bit. 
with a bit of blue in it, a bit of purple in it, a bit of purple in it will make it greyer and not as bright. So even there I've got a white patch there that's sort of balanced I guess, but mm, we'll have a think about that. A little bit of raw sienna through there. Take out some of the edges. I do. It's got a lot going on there now and that's where I want to sort of focus. Even though the mountains are there, um, they don't need to be the whole focus. Now that needs to dry now. Um, the trees will come in on dry paper. And anything else that's in there will come in a dry paper. I was going to do this to just see what happens here. If I just get in here and lighten off the big salt blobs. So I'll wet them, push them, move them out of the way. And now it's wet. Still got circles, but that's right. Put some what colour? Some of this bright red, which is burnt sienna. Put that in there. Just coming out of the picture. A bit of water. Mm, that brings you right to the front. And salt. This is ordinary salt. That won't do such big blobs. A lot of salt doesn't work any better than not so much salt. So you get a different pattern every time you do it. Okay, so that looks like it's just about ready to leave and let it dry. I think that um, mountains improved it over the top of the sky so that it makes the sky go behind. I never ever leave the sky up here and then leave an edge between a mountain. Um, I try and actually bring it right behind. If it's light, that's fine. Even if it's dark, it's still okay because I'd wash it out before it got to a light mountain so that the sky still goes behind. All right, that'll dry now. Okay, I've been looking at the artwork for a day and I've decided to change the uh, direction of the waterway which is a little bit um, interesting so I'm picking up my dark colors again cyclotite, uh, hermatite, a bit of purple and that'll come down the mountain also a little bit of ultramarine I love the purples and blues up here and I'm going to try and indicate that as well so that that sort of shows up a great deal in the artwork so I'm coming down and I want to come down and do a little bit of a turn in there so that it's changed that down to the waterway the edge to that waterway will change as well and back up and that now is taking out more than I wanted to of the waterway and so now that's got some color coming down there to go over the top of that waterway this edge won't be exactly straight so I'll just muck that edge up uh, that goes up the mountain that can just move its way up and down and around something that makes it interesting as it comes down and so now I've repeated that color so I'm working on a basis of three places that that will actually come into the artwork and then I'll move it over to here so that the viewer has to look around and then eventually you'll find the little tiny cottage which is the focus so that's in through there there's a couple of other places I've got um, bits and pieces that I'm going to do so in some of this there will be some greenery and bits that have actually come over that so I've just got the um, what's the color serpentine green and I'll just cut over that in a couple of places so you don't see it just coming all the way down there it's just got a little bit of color over some of it because it wouldn't be just completely clear I'll take that back there I can always get the waterway back so I'm not worried about that so much 
some of the colors in through here it's looking rather weak through here so again I can come back with some of the colors as well and work on the other side of it now and so if I wet part of it there that'll just get something over the top as well in the serpentine green you can put a little bit of raw sienna in it as well to change the color of it and just let that go over there into the grassy area and cover some of that as well that just gets some color back up into that area it needs to cover over that where that meets it doesn't need to be showing that clear all the way down the mountain your, your eye can still track it down the mountain as well and then it will come into this area here where there could be some some sort of um, trees and bits and pieces they're not very high they're they're not actually trees they most of it would be gorse and so I'll just come up to it sideways as if it's growing along that ridge uh, needs to be a bit darker so I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine in that and now that's made it into just a dirty color make sure it comes over so I'm just sort of working on that area if I don't like it I can always get it back so I'm not that worried about it and so down here I've also got an area where one color just sort of stops and there's nothing here there's a watermark there that I want to keep so I won't go up to the watermark but I will bring the burnt sienna and that across in here just to sort of get it to go in with the rest of the artwork otherwise that line is too strong that can just have a rough edge in it as if there's bushes up through there and that just joins that section in together so you're not looking at just that white patch that was sitting there the lights are shining on that too so it's hard to see but that'll just give me the edge to it uh, drop some burnt sienna in it so that every now and again it's a bit darker that's on dry paper there so that'll make an interesting pattern uh, I can drop more burnt sienna in here just in through there remember it had the blue in it as well so I could pick up some um, ultramarine and that'll make it into a darker color as well it won't just show blue if I have it mixed in with the burnt sienna uh, if I wet the paper down here too that can come down and do something as well so I'm just tilting that to see what it will do if it comes down into that area that's always more interesting than trying to paint the whole thing it's going to come down to that line but then I'll take it back up again so that softens it onto the paper okay so moving down also this area here I've got some pencil on there I'll take that off this area here is a little bit strong coming down through here because this color of the mountain is not joining up and of course as I said earlier they're two photos so I've got to join them up so that they go together and so what I'm going to do is go back to the original dark colors um, the so I've got the tight hermatite and purple Windsor purple and a blue can come into that but I'll do it as it is at this stage and come in behind the mountain there and just about there I'll just put it down and start to get something in there up to that area it comes around the corner and then you've just got the waterway and so I'm starting to sort of move that round so that there's less area there that'll come down and around and I can let that go into that turn around there where the water comes in and what do I do with the rest of it the rest of it can come over this um, edge here because that edge is a little bit too pronounced and so if I wash that out now it's coming down the mountain going the wrong direction that's the wrong direction it's got to go that way so it comes down the mountain goes up the mountain back down this area here wouldn't be completely straight either so I just muck that up oh I didn't mean to do that <laughs> I just hit it with the brush um, 
and didn't mean to. So I'll just get a tissue and just take that back. That'll just come back and I can put it back on now. Okay, in the colours that I had, I've got stronger colours now. Ooh, that tried to kill it. Okay, back down here. So you can see that things do happen on the way. The brush just dropped uh, and went on to that end. So what I'll do is leave that. I won't play in that because I can take it back later and change that. Go up the mountain, let it go up, wash the brush. It's going up at that angle, so I want to continue on with that angle up. and take the top out I don't want to see that top so I can just bring it back and take it back off it's got some strength there that makes you look around this doesn't look so good over here anymore um, but it looks like rugged mountains okay so that's coming down into this area here and I'll just take the back edge there because I want those two colors to mold together I want the green and the uh, purple to mold together so I'll work with the purple color to start with and I'll get a little bit lighter so I've picked up a lot more water I want some of it to come in down through here into this area and I want to close that area up as well but I don't want it to go over completely over the burnt sienna so I'll just wet that and bring the burnt sienna back okay the burnt sienna is going into there now that gives me a lot of color I do class myself as a colorist. I love color um, and I do work with a lot of strong colors. So now I've got the green back and so the green will come back down into that and go into the other colors. I don't want it to go any further than that. The brown. I can leave the brown there and put some trees in there later or I can straighten it out. I think I'll leave it. Um, it's more interesting left than it is if I try and work with it and just do something else with it. it just look like there's something coming down through here so now it's the artwork starting to do its own thing it's starting to form its own idea of what's happening on here don't like it so much over there so what I'm going to do is wet that area just across there and come back with the green serpentine green and burnt sienna and so that will give me something here that will just come over that edge and cover some of that leave it that's obviously dry there that's going to take that out and just some foliage in through there so that just sort of stops your eye from going all the way down with this crazy um, edges in the white coming through there so that's what's going to happen so as it comes forward I'll wash the brush again as it comes forward here it's going to do the same thing not so big and that's almost all water just going to leave that and the purple is now coming down through and meeting the blue and the purple over here just pick up some more of the French ultramarine well, I thought I was it's very dirty let that go in there let it run around don't want to take out those other colors though that can run up into those areas there as well try and do some running let it run let it do its own thing let it go up the page so now you're not seeing exactly what's going on here I can make these areas smaller later by coming in behind them or just getting color in behind so I'm just going to get some light color in just all the colors together and so as soon as I do that I get a light color I'm just going to bring it into here and cut that off a little bit get that a little bit thinner um, down the other side there I'm going to bring some more green in there later that needs to have a nicer turn on it looks like the water's actually changed direction and come down there every time I touch it something else happens I'm going to attach it to the page with some of the other colors um, I do like what's going on here I don't have to touch it but I think it needs for that to sort of come in and quieten down and this is way too strong just lighten that off 
that'll just lighten and the colors will just go back together because it's wet it'll just follow itself okay coming back down through here we've got the green coming down have to do something with this and I was putting trees on and I'm going to actually now start to get some trees on here but I'll do it in the burnt sienna so it'll go across here jump across the other side and up the other side so that'll give me two sides of it now that'll have trees on it burnt sienna and the green see what happens bring the water in closer so that there's less of the actual waterway showing they can get taller come around the edge and now they'll go over the top and they're only just water so they'll be lighter later that can come down through here and just create another line going out through there to the other browns that can go up to here cut over that so now I'll just dance the brush around here and just keep adding bits and pieces okay what happened um don't like that so much this is causing things to go on there could be a little bit too strong to here um I added the salt and taken the salt off there so it's got just a small pattern instead of those big dots that it had on it and so now I'll work my way down that looks like a dip in something once it gets dark in a hollow it changes the idea of the landscape still looking at that I don't want this to take away from everything else so I'm gonna actually just quieten that whole thing down watch this Whoa. just wet it just let it go over wet it fast it's just gonna run this will run down to there so all of this now will become a lot quieter because all the white, white paper is disappearing and that quietened that whole scene down not sure about that yet that may just take our eye too much and up in the rocks here too that can anchor in behind here by having some darks as well back to this area um, I really don't like the color there I don't like the strength of the color it's really messy so I'm just going to use the straight blue and purple because I think the other colors um, the cyclotite is a crystal color and it has um, a crystally effect to it so it's almost a little bit like a gouache so it can make other colors look rather dull so I'll just come back in here and just put some rich color in that's the sort of color that I like in something that's that bright but it won't dry that bright that's the thing people don't understand that a lot of colors can just disappear they melt into the artwork or you can take it back out if it's too strong I'll leave that for a little while now I've got some places that make you look around the artwork starts out at the bottom moves up and over this has become a little bit messy but mm, I'll work on that and see if I like it or I don't like it more trees okay the trees that were there I'm just going to wet some burnt sienna behind it and just come up underneath it with other color and let it go in there and it should change that slightly and push the other up it should push color up I put some water in it it didn't do anything that has can follow where it wants to go where it wants to be nice if it kept for oh, if it went across there that could be good so I've allowed it to just run across the page and it'll cause a cauliflower up there 
which will be interesting. That's that's what I'm looking for is interesting, not just the painting itself. Even along here, if I put water through here, that'll do something as well. Let the water run. See what it does. Pushes the pigment up, but also takes the colour with it and does something and leaves lines in it. Okay, so remember I put the strong colour in. Now I'm just going to take some out and it'll leave the lighter sections of it. So it looks like there's something else going on in that area other than two spots. That'll come down the mountain. Okay, different parts of it are working quite fine. I'm now going to go down, I think, to the little hut. Um, but I'll let that dry first so that I can get in there and just paint the hut up and see what happens when the rest of it dries. Down to the little house. I've got a very, very tiny sable brush that I'm going to be painting the house up with. And the house has just a little grey roof, which is burnt sienna and French ultramarine. And I'll put that on a sheet of paper, basically. It's just got a little house on here. Won't wipe the house up. Just a grey. And so what I'll do is wet that until I get the grey that I want. It's a little bit brown. Put a bit more blue in it. That's a better grey. <clears throat> has a blue sort of look to the roof anyway and so that's going on the roof so I'll leave a little white line at the top of the roof down to the bottom of the roof so that's the the gray now if I need that gray to be a little bit stronger I can just keep putting it on and I think I will because I know that's going to dry lighter just keep dropping that in until I'm happy with the colour. So it needs to be a shade darker than what I actually want. Picking up the grey again. I'm painting off the cardboard. Um, it's easier that way. I've got a little black spot there. I don't know what that is, but it looks like it's going to stay. All right, the only thing it has there is the lines down the side here there's a line there and a line there the rest of it gets rubbed out it has a black section over the house i've just got the house a close-up of the house here it has just a black that goes over the top there's some little white dots on the roof but that's at such a distance you're not going to see those the two windows and the door and the section above it I don't know whether you can see it there clearly. I'll just put it back so that you can see it. Little tiny house. And using the burnt sienna and ultramarine, very, very strong, I'll end up making a black. But I'll make it with a bigger brush. I'll just bring it into the, the picture there so you can see it. Um, it's made with fresh paint put together until it goes into a black. You could even put purple in that. You could put lots of colours in it and still get the colour, the darker colour. Okay, so that's too much on my brush, so I'll need to actually put that on a tissue and thin it out. I'll put it on the paper, actually. And so that'll give me the little tiny windows okay so the tiny windows have a little tiny section at the top and a section at the bottom tiny section at the top tiny section at the bottom now that's too wet to control it so I'll stop there and come to the door and then I can take the paint off the brush and be able to move it around 
now I can take most of it off the brush and get these windows to look like windows. Has a bottom section. Oops, they're getting too big. They're better big than no windows. Okay, so it's got its windows. You can see it at a distance, and it will be at a distance. And then it has the A-frame. Now there's not much else that you can see. I'm just going to put a line down the chimney, just so you can see the chimney. I've got the grey on there. That grey needs to dry before I can do the gable across the top of the door. I wonder if I can get them squarer. I just don't want them to get bigger. This one's a bit smaller. a huge distance to the actual trees around the house I'll go to the green um, I can also use Windsor yellow and ultramarine to make a green I'll see what I've made that comes up behind the chimney so it shows how tall the house is uh, how tall the trees behind the house and so there's just trees the pine trees down through there, they basically join up together around the house and make the edge of the house, the edge to the chimney. Some up the back. Now I'll just go mad and put as many in there as I can, just making sure that they're not equal. The paint's coming off the brush as well. And that's okay. Down here where they come out to the edge here, they get a bit softer so that's coming out down through there and then in the front there's lighter trees there's a spot of brown that I can see in the middle of the trees about there just fill that in down the roof and then down the side of the house ah they're right back they're back up here and then they come forward so those brown will do the, the trunks of some trees and then I'll get some lighter trees which means that it'll be almost all a little bit of blue but a lot of yellow. And so now I can get lighter trees in the front. Not light enough. A bit more water. People don't understand that using a lot of yellow will actually go over the darks as well. And so over here, there's some lighter trees. Just make them fit in between those and get some light and dark into them. They come forward, come down here, and lighter trees. Now, because I've got light trees, I'm also going to bring some more darks in behind them and up underneath them. And so now I'll just use the darker brown with the blue in it and come up underneath some of those trees in the shaded area and that'll make some of the actual trunks as well. And so there's a trunk there, that's a trunk, a little bit of dark underneath there, that makes a little trunk, that makes another little trunk, not exactly straight, another trunk. And then I'll just come across the bottom of that and let that out so that there's shading in underneath the trees. And so that's what you see. That goes up through there. That shapes the tree. It's got a little stump there now. Things are happening all on their own. Some dark over near this tree and leave a light stump to that. Just keep moving. And now I'll come back with the darks. So the darker green was a lot of ultramarine and a little bit of yellow just to turn it to green and then I can come back in behind here. That'll leave that in behind a tree out to the edge, just a little bit of roughness out there. It's still wet here, so I'm just not going to go there just yet. Some green in behind where that brown is and start to paint. Not 
just follow what I was doing. That's a pine tree there. It's got a pointy top missing now. That can come down between those trees, up the top. And so now, now you're seeing different parts of it. So you can see some light trees, you can see some dark trees. It's a tiny little house. Just got straight yellow now. just see that bright yellow on that tree another one there probably another one between those other two trees just because I can there spread it out make them come down to the actual trunks otherwise they're free form there. Now there's three trees in a row which is something I don't normally do so I'm just going to bring one of the back trees down somewhere maybe over this one. Make that disappear a little bit so you just can't see one two three. That's better. Okay now the roof should be dry so it has the pitch over the roof looking for the darks which was up here it's almost brown but that's all right put some purple in it that'll make it darker and it's got the little section over the roof which is that and that and then just in the middle here it's dark is it lower than the roof line no it's not lower than the roof line it's the same as the roof line so now it's dry, I possibly can do more with the windows and just strengthen the dark section of them. Oops, get bigger. The door's dark. You don't see anything else on the house. It's just looking white. So what I'm going to do is when it dries, I'm just going to actually come back when it's dry and rub out the pencil. There's a little bit of brown along here that can match up with that otherwise there's nothing happening there and that gets the line of the house going back that way just to make it look like it's going back take that out don't want that to have a straight line in it now you can see behind the house now the other thing I was going to do is move the waterway at the top just by putting a little bit of raw sienna on my brush with nothing else but water and just coming over this so it's not as white I think that needs to be tamed down don't mind it there tame that down Just so your eyes not picking up just that and nothing else. Now I'll have a look at that um, and I'll put a frame on it just to show what it looks like now just in case I'll just put a frame there to show you that I always sort of look at something with a frame on it because I might change my mind and not frame the whole thing. Oh, I've got an A4 frame here and I could basically use that and get myself another artwork which would be just that and what I'm doing is putting that in the third basically I can't drop it down anymore because I'm running out of paper but that could also be the artwork instead of the full artwork so there's lots of different artworks you could have out of that you could even cut the house out and come back to that but that's Sort of not telling the story so your artwork should tell a story um, and I'll come back and do a um, an idea of what I do like and what I don't like um, again I'm still having trouble with the waterways and the trouble is that they're too white just run some color down that one and then it goes down there quietly 
All right, I'll come back and do a critique and tell you what I like and what I don't like. I'll take the tape off when I'm ready um, and come back and have a look. After several um, days now, I've came back to the artwork and had a look at what needs to happen to actually finish it off. There's a few things. Um, this point here is obviously a point that's really, really overtaking the artwork. And basically when you look at the mountains and that, and then finally you see the little house, that's exactly how it is. But that just keeps glaring at me that it's not right. So also it's the color um, that this purple line is way too harsh. So I can soften that line. I can bring it in and bring it right into that area. But in doing that, the paint's coming off. So that's okay. I can actually add paint to it, make that waterway a little bit um, smaller, just so that you see a part of it. Now I'm actually moving it until the paper accepts the fact that it's moved and take away the back edge that I don't want to see that. And also I can drop a little bit of green in there, the opposite to the other colors. Uh, it's got green over here. It's got no green here, so I can just drop a bit of green into it as well. Something that softens that purple, the hard line of the purple, gives it that line that it's coming around. And let that sit there and watch it for a little while and see what happens. And so also this is way too strong. So if I put a little bit of um, burnt sienna and raw sienna on it that'll tame it down as well because it'll bring it into these colors and a little bit of purple on it as well so i'm just going to change that color just on the end of it there it can come up there just leave the marks up there with the color just blending in and then i'll put some of the um, windsor purple on it and just tame it down slightly so it fits into the artwork and not just sits by itself there it's now got the color coming down through there so it takes that out of your vision and I'll just keep an eye on that see what happens it can go over that line and just stop it being so severe down at the end here just play in that there and let it the paint just sit there and see what happens with that now that whole area is sort of tamed down a little bit more okay what has it done um, a little bit of the hermatite violet and French ultramarine as well I've come into that and that'll make it look like it's sort of jumped over there and the colors now blending from one mountain to another and that makes it look a little bit more interesting just got a little bit of the darks along the edge there that just brings it down don't want any straight lines in there so that just means water that can come out that was a straight line as well so I'm taking straight lines off moving paint round letting it look like it's coming down the mountain the same here you go to the mountain then you come to nothing you come to greenery so that's another place that that's going to change the hermitite the Windsor Purple and French Ultramarine that'll come in one side of it that is darker it's shining for me so I can't see the color if I move my head a little bit I can and it jumps over there and comes down and splits that slightly that's another way to get colors to come in together just make it a little bit thinner through there and that then has made that have the purple coming over the other side it can also sort of still come down the mountain slightly you could bring it back up to here i don't want to paint too much at this stage because the artwork's been done it's just little bits and pieces of making it blend together okay so raw sienna and burnt sienna are missing from over here and so what I'm going to do is put it in here, just leave a little bit of that color through there. But I've put it there for a reason, just want that not to be as blue. Um, 
that's going to have salt in it and so is it I've got salt work down here I'll have salt work up salt work up there and salt in here just in through there I've taken the tape off it but that's all right just in through there I'll get some more salt work and what that'll do is make the eye move around with what I've actually started in the artwork and therefore the unity will be formed between the the salt work that is open but it's quite damp today so not much is coming out don't want too much either less salt's better than a lot of salt in some places uh, a lot of the time I put the salt in the oven and dry it out before I use it as well in wet weather uh, summer's probably a good time to do a lot of salt work now that'll sort of just work its way in and you'll see a little bit of the change in the salt work I'll leave that go up the mountain a little bit so I'm looking at the edges of the paint as well and that's when it's getting drier that I can actually change those edges slightly so that you're not seeing strong edges I don't mind that going up there but now it's got a little bit of the two areas are blending together and that basically um, evolved through putting two photos together now if I actually and, and when I will do this again when I do this again I'll concentrate on the high mountains here and basically work the whole thing around that and only extend the mountains across and still have the little house um, and basically change it so that it's the one artwork there's also a chance that you can put frames around your artwork as well and see what you like of your work because I don't always like everything that I've got that one's got some paint on it um, if I did that I could have that as the artwork but I'd have to still get the house in the third of the artwork I couldn't do that that's too close and I couldn't do that because then I've got the house in the middle so I'd be looking at working for the little house to become the third of the artwork I wouldn't want to do that and come down here and get rid of the mountains that wouldn't be attractive so you need to have a look and see what you like of an artwork after you've finished it I hope you've enjoyed that uh, when it's dry I'll take the salt off and basically spray it with the spray that I uh, the micador matte spray front and back to actually seal the paper and the salt.